Good morning, everyone. Good morning, dear President Van Rompuy, dear President Schwenk, colleague, dear Dr. Zatai, distinguished guests, and indeed my colleagues of the Employers Group. It is a pleasure and honor for me to welcome you today to the event organized by the Employers Group in the framework of the Conference of the Future of Europe with the title of Setting Out a New Vision for the Future of Europe. For those of you who don't know us yet, but of course not in this room, but the ones following online, very briefly, the Employers Group is the body within the European Economic and Social Committee representing more than 20 million European companies big and small, companies which form the backbone of our European economy. Our members, colleagues who you see here, are active in the business world and bring the day-to-day -day reality of businesses from all over the European Union to the Brussels level. We work in close cooperation with partner organizations to promote and defend the interests of European enterprise. I am pleased that they are here with us today yeah, and specifically, I salute Business Europe, SME United, SGI Europe, Copacogeca, Euro Chambers, and Euro Commerce. Today, we are launching our group manifesto for the future of Europe, titled Making the EU Capable of Action, because it is action that we need and no longer words. It is a paper that embodies our views on the Europe we want in the coming decades. So, very briefly, what is the Europe we dream of? First and foremost, it's a strong and more competitive Europe. A Europe that leads the world in the green and digital transitions while maintaining and enhancing prosperity for present and future generations. Dear colleagues of the Employers Group, you all know my thoughts on this. Whilst the pandemic has put, us, has put before us unimaginable challenges, it is climate change which will be the real challenge that will define us in the years and decades to come. And we must meet this challenge head on. And as we move from crisis into recovery, from protecting our health and safeguarding our, our economy to embracing new opportunities of, ahead of us, we need to be well prepared and equip ourselves with the right tools to put Europe on a strong positive path in which freedom, creativity, and importantly, entrepreneurship can thrive. Dear colleagues, dear distinguished guests, sometimes with so much emphasis on the future, it is also worth looking a bit at the lessons of the past. When we initiate new common projects in Europe, such as this initiative which we are discussing today, I believe they should adhere to the same principles that brought success not more than 70 years ago. They must be based on consensus that action is truly necessary, and this is proportionality. They should contemplate the actions, they should complement, sorry, the actions of governments, and this is subsidiarity. They should be clearly linked to people's most pressing concerns. And finally, they should focus on matters of European or global significance. If these principles are applied, there are many areas in which Europe does not need to get involved. On the, on the other hand, there are also important areas where it must take new initiatives with our, which are not just legitimate, but are now essential. And where responses can only be provided at the supranational level, we should focus on those actions that deliver tangible and recognizable results. And here I would list four main actions very briefly. First and foremost, to allow citizens, companies and countries the freedom to trade and create prosperity, one of our main tasks should be the completion of our single market. Secondly, Europe needs to protect global trade rules, ensure a level playing field and strike the balance between strategic autonomy, yes, important, but also openness to international trade. This is done by promoting a strong industrial base and resilient international supply chains. It is important to ensure Europe's technological sovereignty in strategically important sectors. Research and innovation activities need to be stepped up in key enabling technologies, such as AI, 
genetics, nanotechnology, biotechnology, energy and mobility technology. Thirdly, it is important for the EU to play an active role in international climate policy. We strongly support the Paris Agreement and the forward-looking climate policy, but we strongly believe that this needs to be coupled with industrial competitiveness and reliable framework conditions. Climate targets have to be realistic and must be reached without undermining European competitiveness. For us, all EU initiatives, and we, I also said this yesterday with President of the Commission, all EU initiatives should undergo a competitiveness check to assess their impact on companies as regards the cost of doing business, on their capacity to innovate, and on their, on, and on their international competitiveness. We ask for this not out of some self, sense of self-importance, but because we follow the logic that is that companies, it is companies which create wealth, which can then be invested in new green technologies, whilst at the same time taking care of the most vulnerable. And I believe this is the logic that has to guide all our actions moving forward. Last but not least, if we accept the fact that the EU will remain in a permanent crisis, we cannot operate in the current rigid legal governance approach. For the Union to be able to exercise its powers when confronted with crises, we need to devise more effective steering instruments that are flexible, agile and simply faster, not only to allow the European Union to, sur to survive, but also to act powerfully and effectively in the global arena. Ladies and gentlemen, I conclude by saying that the institutions have created a structure that is called the Conference on the Future of Europe, with all its good and all its bad. This is but a vehicle that is meant to serve a purpose, that of mapping out a future path. My appeal to you is let us not be conditioned by the limitations of the vehicle. Let us keep a strong, open mind that does not fear doing whatever it takes, if I can borrow the phrase, to not fear doing whatever it takes to forge a long-lasting and sustainable change in the EU so that the, at the end we can truly have an EU which is capable of taking meaningful action. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to the debate.